Hello, I'm Kieran Lynch and welcome to Lovicast, the Chocolate Sheep Podcast. Each episode will bring you less insights, advice and technical updates for the sheep industry. One of the conditions we can see occurring in lambs each year is hypothermia. How we treat that lamb has a big impact on its subsequent survival. In this episode, I'm joined with sheep specialist Michael Gosling to talk to us a little bit more about it. We discussed the steps involved to warm these lambs up to normal body temperature, based on age, severity and the type of energy sources actually required. Michael explains how to use the glucose or interferon needle injection, describing the technique and how to make up the glucose solution, and why it's a vital life-saving technique farmers can use. We start off the episode with Michael explaining what hypothermia is, the symptoms and the predisposing factors. Hypothermia is basically where the, the body temperature starts dropping and I suppose, you know, all, all mammals need to have a certain level of, of body temperature for, for us to be able to function. And um, in sheep, I suppose, the body temperature that we, with normal body temperature is kind of 39 to 40 degrees Celsius or, or 102 to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. And if, if, if the temperature rises above that, that's generally a sign that the animal is fighting off some sort of an infection. Um, you know, and, and, and I suppose it's important that people have thermometers and are able to measure those things. Um, and it's a good guide when we're, we're looking at animals and wondering, you know, if they're sick and do they need treatment. So high temperature is, is fighting off infection. Normal temperature is fine. And I suppose hypothermia then is basically where the temperature drops below that minimum threshold of either 39 uh, degrees Celsius or 102 Fahrenheit. And, and that's basically, you know, uh, I, I suppose, uh, also dangerous. So anything outside, either below or above the kind of normal thresholds, are signs of, of, of things not being well. And I suppose particularly in young animals, um, young animals are particularly prone to hypothermia. Um, and, and very often that's, that's either because they haven't got sufficient food um, or they're, they've been exposed to extreme weather or cold um, conditions. So basically, Michael, when that body temperature drops below that 39 degrees, body function starts to shut down. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the physical signs, you, you know, you'd see a lamb that is, you know, slow to get up and, and you know, look sick and, you know, drooped and, and all of that, all, all the way down to that lamb that is stretched out, almost looks like it, it, it's dead, you know, but it's, it's still alive. Um, can't lift its lay, head, can't stand up. You know, that's the, the severe hypothermia stages. So, you know, we have hypothermia basically when, when that sets in, um, you know, the, the lamb no longer functions properly as a lamb. And when, when, when the person who's looking after the sheep comes into the shed, he or she will immediately be able to pick out the, 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 the sheep that are under the weather with, with hypothermia. And I suppose it's then, Kieran, being able to identify, you know, what steps to take. What, what do I need to do to rectify this? Because at that stage, the animal is, is shutting down. It's it's losing body temperature. It's not able to maintain that body temperature of 39 to 40 degrees or 102 to 104 Fahrenheit. And, you know, eventually it will die if, if, if there isn't rapid intervention there in terms of, of, you know, getting the body temperature back up and also supplying nutrients. Okay, so typically we think of this more in terms of outdoors on a sleety, cold night, that hard weather that we some of us have experienced recently and probably will face again. It can occur indoors as well, Michael. Absolutely, yeah, Kieran. So, I mean, look at where we, we, we'd often see it indoors, Kieran, is, is a little bit of mismothering or, you know, say that yo that has has three or four lambs and, you know, a couple of them are small and and you know, the person who's looking after them thinks that they've got a good suck, goes away for the night and comes back in the morning and one of them is stretched, you know, maybe you thought the lamb sucked, but it didn't. Um, a lamb is stretched out, can't stand, maybe can't lift its head. Um, so that, that that's indoors. That's basically where we have have maybe a combination of a very cold night and lack of nutrition, or it might just be lack of nutrition on, on its own. Or then the outdoor one, uh, Kieran, obviously, is when we see these kind of adverse weather events like we've had recently, you know, um, for people who are lambing now or, or will be lambing in the next couple of weeks if you're a real bad night, you know, maybe a couple of, of lambs where they're not getting as much as they should. Um, you know, those lambs are just about hanging in there on the mother or lambs that might be very bare as well um, or just happen to lie in an exposed part of the field. So then, you know, hypothermia kicks in there 
Um, and those are older lambs, and and they'll they'll be very easily identified in the field as well. Like yeah. Okay. So they're the predisposing factors and the symptoms we're looking at. Let's talk a little bit about treatment. I suppose, Michael, the blanket thing most will do is warm them up. That's the obvious thing to do. Just maybe take us through the steps that we actually need to do to treat those lambs with hypothermia. Yeah, look, at Kieran, I, I suppose the, the the important thing really here is there's there's a kind of a uh, flow chart, really, I suppose, as such. First thing is to take the temperature and to see whether we have what we call mild hypothermia or severe hypothermia. So mild hypothermia is, is lambs that are kind of from 37 to 39 degrees. And generally in those situations, you're talking about just drying the lamb if it's wet and feeding it with a stomach tube and then putting it in under heat, you know, and get the temperature back up to 39 degrees. Um, and that that's generally, you know, that lamb is, is, is probably still in reasonably good shape. It's a lamb that's able to stand. It's a lamb that's able to hold up its head. But you know that there's something wrong, I suppose. Uh, the thermometer here is really important here. And if we had the thermometer, it really is, it gives gives people a good indication. If we're below 37 um, here, and then we're talking about severe hypothermia. And that's really where clock is really ticking here. You know, um, this lamb is in serious trouble um, body temperature has reduced rapidly um, and is going to keep going down there and we need to to um, get in there and, and start um, uh, taking action. So I, I suppose when we talk about those severely hypothermic lambs, um, we divide them into lambs that are under five hours of age or lambs that are over five hours of age. So if the lamb is under five hours of age, that's a relatively young lamb. And that will still have body reserves. So that, that's why we talk about this five hours. We reckon it takes about five hours for the, the lambs to kind of burn up that brown fat that they have, that they're born with this, this kind of energy reserve. Um, so under five hours of age, the lamb will still have its fat and will be mobilizing that. And then basically it's just about drying the lamb and putting it in a warming box. If the lamb is older than five hours of age, um, but it can, it can hold up its head and swallow and we feed it with a stomach tube and then basically dry it and put it in a warming box. If, however, what will be the case, probably in most cases with these lambs, uh, the lamb is over five hours of age and he's not able to hold up his head, um, then we need to take a, a very different course of action. And this is the one that I suppose not a lot of farmers um, are familiar with. And this is where, where people often make the mistake of taking that lamb and tube feeding it with a stomach tube. And and that's that's basically going to end up killing that lamb because that lamb is not in a position to to be able to break down that food source into a, a, an energy source that it needs. Um, and what that lamb really needs is energy to keep it alive until we can get its body temperature up to an, a, a state where it's not going to die from hypothermia. So just to clarify that one, that's the lamb that we're most commonly going to see. It's that lamb over five hours. If you go in and you stomach tube with a colostrum or an alternative source of it, you're actually probably speeding up its its own mortality. It hasn't got any enough energy reserves to make use of that to heat up. Yeah. If you stomach tube that lamb, yeah. you, you've basically done for it because okay. what that lamb needs is a rapidly available source of energy just to keep it alive until we get the body temperature back up. Because what's happening yeah. in that lamb is it, it's, it's basically shutting down. It's dying. Um, and what we need there is a glucose injection into the belly of that lamb. And that glucose injection then followed by heat, you know, to okay. raise the temperature up um, is what's going to save that particular lamb. And we'll come on to the glucose injection in a second. But similarly, if we put that lamb straight in under heat or speeding up its metabolism again, we're going to have the same effect. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Think of this lamb as as dying and what we need is is energy to keep it alive long enough to get the body temperature up. Okay. If we try to get the body temperature up, lamb is going to die because it, it, it's running out of, of, of time. Um, so the energy is the important thing. And the only way that energy can get into that lamb is not in milk. It's not in colostrum. It's a glucose injection into the belly of the lamb. And for, you know, often people will say, oh, you know, I haven't ever done it. I'd be afraid I'd do any harm or whatever. You, you know, that lamb is going to die if that doesn't happen. You have nothing to lose. Um, you have everything to gain by giving the injection, um, you know, and if it's done properly and the lamb is, is put into a warming box, 
quite a few of those lambs come back and it is almost miraculous to see the recovery in those lambs that you know a lamb that was here and you thought was almost dead definitely on death's door couldn't stand couldn't lift its head and two hours later that lamb is standing inside in the inside in the warming box looking for 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 a bottle you know and um yeah it's a miraculous type of recovery really okay so i might get you just maybe explain what the glucose actually is that we're injecting, how we go about getting it, and take us through the technique then after that. Yep. So it's 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 a glucose or dextrose solution. So I mean, the most commonly available glucose, I suppose, is in your. Some co-ops have it now. Uh, health food shops, even some some of the supermarkets will have it. The, your your bog standard glucose powder. Um, that's one option. Or the second option is these little glucogel sachets that we use. The diabetics sometimes use or carry with them in case they get low. Um, you squirt them into into their under their tongue, so that's a that's a um, available form of, of dextrose. So either of those two options. Um, very important here is that we have this on the farm. This generally will happen early in the morning when you go out first thing. You find this lamb in the shed, or when you're going out herding in the morning after a bad night, you pick up these lambs. You don't have time to go to town to to, to start looking for glucose in the hill. Wait until half nine until the shop is open or something like that. So, you know, tub of glucose. Kg of glucose there, you know, six, seven, eight euros. They're ch- it's cheap as chips. Um, have it there in 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 the shade. Uh, basically, if it's a glucose powder, which is probably what most people will end up with, Kieran, so we'll go through that that system. It's basically what you want to do is put four heaped teaspoons into a hundred mils of water, um, and it that'll mix up straight away, and you give you give ten mils of that solution. Uh, per kg. So for your four kg lamb, you'll be giving 40 mils. For a five kg sure. lamb, you'll be giving 50 mils. Um, the water, obviously, Kieran, has to be boiled to make it sterile. So generally, what the, the way of doing this would be you put a small bit of water into the bottom of the kettle just to en- enough to cover the element so that you can boil it quickly because time is of the essence here. We've got this lamb, so we need to get in there quickly. Um, boil the kettle, um, put a, pour 100 mils of that into a cup and for, uh, fire in your, your four or five teaspoonfuls of, of the glucose, mix it up, um, draw out the, the, the amount. So for most people, it'll be a 50 mil, 40, 50 mil, mils of, of the solution for a four or five kg lamb. Um, allow it to cool down in the syringe to, to body temperature. Um, and then you're ready to inject it into the, into the lamb. Okay, so sterile water. You've gone through the dilution on and look, I suppose, this like if you have to cool it in a hurry, you know, another glass inside a bigger glass of cold water or that or fill in between two beakers, you'll get there. Take us through the actual injection process. Yeah, so the injection is very easy. Um, I, I, I suppose it's the, the, one, the one thing I would find, Kieran, when we're doing this and we do a good few workshops around the country with farmers, and, and this is part of it, we, we, we show them how to do this very often. We People tend to be a little bit squeamish about injecting into the into the belly. Um, it's no different, I suppose, to injecting a sheep anywhere else, but we're just not used to doing it. So we're talking about a, a one-inch needle, uh, generally a small gauge. You know, 19 gauge is what's recommended. I think it's quite hard to get 19 gauge, but certainly most people will have an 18 gauge needle. 18 gauge needle, um, a one-inch needle. That's what you want on your syringe. You need a big syringe for this, so you know, 50, 60 mil syringe is ideal to get a couple of them before lambing starts or have them on site so that you can use those. Um, drop your solution, obviously. The lamb, then what we're doing is you, you hold the lamb by the front legs <clears throat> and basically an inch out from the navel and an inch down with your thumb, roughly the thickness of your thumb, out from the navel and down. Squirt a small little bit of iodine at that, at that particular spot. You're just disinfecting um, the area where you're going to insert the needle into the belly. And then you you basically stick the needle the whole one inch all the way into the belly at a 45 degree angle facing down towards the tail. So you're going at a 45 degree angle, aiming for the the, the, the base of the tail where the tail is at the back end of the lamb. Um, so from the belly, just beside an inch out and an inch down from the navel, push the needle in the whole way. Um, pull back a small bit just to make sure we don't have blood or urine, that we're not inside in the bladder or, or, or inside in an organ unlikely to happen. If that was to happen, you need to discharge the solution and start again. Um, and and then basically you you inject the entire contents in there into the interperitoneal you know, cavity. 
put the lamb in under the heat, that gives the lamb an immediate source of available energy to keep it alive until we get a chance to get the body heat up and then heat the lamb up really, really quickly, as quickly as we can. Either a heater box or a little box with a red lamp in it, but, you know, kind of covered in so that the temperature rises rapidly inside that area. Some people bring them into the kitchen and put them beside the cooker. Um, and then once the lamb's temperature rises, um, in a in an awful lot of cases, uh, you know, I would say eight out of ten cases, depending obviously on how how badly they're gone, um, those lambs will will revive, and then we give them a smoke tube and you know monitor them for a period of time, um, okay. make sure they get going again. So, like by going in with that injection, there is a bit of a confidence issue in doing it the first time. You are providing them with a rapidly absorbable source of glucose. And it will bring them around again. So it's like anything else, Michael. I mean, we've talked about this once they've done it once. They're quite confident in doing it again. But if you don't do it, that lamb is a goner anyway. You have nothing to lose. And this is the important point here. You have nothing to lose by injecting this lamb. And the lamb has everything to gain um, by you carrying out this process. So what I would say is, is, you know, take a shot at it. it. There's very little that can go wrong. It's no different to giving an injection anywhere else. Um, in the body um, so but the key thing that we need here is we need to have you know needles syringe glucose solution and a mechanism for boiling water quickly in the shed you know and um, so it's you not know, a small little kettle will do that job for you and, and a cup then basically to put it in try it, get it in there do not be tempted don't under any circumstances be tempted to stomach tube that lamb if you stomach tube that lamb, you have done for him. The lamb, you have signed his death warrant. You know, the game is over for that particular lamb because it is not in a position to be able to break down that milk. So the only thing that is going to save that particular lamb at that point is, is a glucose injection. Um, okay. And once people have done it once, as you say, um, you know, it is, they become very, very confident. And they are, you know, in general, people are very happy with the results because they see, you know, that these lambs that they normally lose on their farm every year, are actually being saved now by, by carrying out this procedure. Just briefly, Michael, as a way to finish up on this one, a little bit of post-care on it. When that lamb's up and that lamb's move it again, in a lot of cases, he's fit to go back out. Probably worth just investigating the O before you let him back with her, whether it was a case of being rejected or maybe a mistake, someone said, or there's generally some other underlying issue. Yep. Look at the lamb that's being fed and suckled really well. Uh, you know, has great ability to withstand the kind of adverse weather that we're seeing, you know. So, I mean, take, um, you know, bad night there, you know, you could be bringing in maybe three or four lambs out of maybe, you know, 100 or 150 lambs. Um, like, they're the lambs where the moms aren't doing the job, maybe, or they got mismothered, or or like you said, the U.S. is for teeth. She's not letting the lamb suckle or, you know, she's kind of light on one side, the other lamb is taking all the milk. So generally, I suppose... Uh, the thing here is to, to, to bring in the O and the other lamb and to just check what's going on, you know, and, and if maybe, you know, the lamb isn't getting going there, maybe either put him into a pet lamb pen or foster him onto another EO. Um, or it might just be, you know, a simple case of EO with a sore heat and she needs a bit of treatment there until that soreness is gone and, and she's taken the lamb again. One's to definitely keep a name. Look, I think it's a useful thing to cover at the moment. It is one technique that you could definitely encourage anyone to use. It's just a case of getting on with. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, try it. And if you're if you're in doubt about the whole thing um, and you're wondering what did he say on the podcast there with Kieran Lynch, you know, a week ago, um, most people have a smartphone when you're in the shade at half five or six in the morning. Google it. You know, there's lots of uh, lots of information online. It'll, if you if you can't remember, what it, what was it? Four teaspoons or five teaspoons? Was it a hundred mils or fifty mils? But what I would say is, you know, you're you're not going to do any harm by going in with a bit of extra. Um, the key thing is just to to get energy in there, keep that lamb alive until you can get the body temperature. I might just throw a link up in the description. This Michael we covered in a recent Let's Talk Sheep webinar. Again, we actually went through it in more detail. I think so. I'll throw that up in the description. This podcast again, something somebody can watch back at. Michael, good having you on. Thanks for that update. Thanks, Kieran. Okay, we'll leave it there for this week's episode. I have included a link in the description of this podcast to the recent Let's Talk Cheap webinar where Michael covers the glucose injection treatment of hypothermic lambs as well as a lot of other practical tips around lambing. That's it for me for updates from the Sheep Programme. Keep an eye on our Twitter page at Chaga Sheep. I'm Kieran Lynch. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe and follow us wherever you get your podcasts.